Hello there. There is a potential for a brand new series to explode on the channel today, ladies and gentlemen, y'all. And it might be a double upload, y'all, with the first episode and the second episode, depending on how I feel. Um, but usually that would set the standard for how I'm going to upload this show in the future, like The Sopranos, like with Buffy, like with Angel. Sometimes we'll do on triple, quadruple uploads in a day. It's absolutely fantastic. And I did a triple upload with The Wire recently as well. And you guys seem to be enjoying that. So what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and film student here in Sydney, Australia. Absolutely sitting his shot. And today we are going to be starting the series Fargo for the very first time. And let's see how it does on the channel i'm not going to say i'm going to continue it um but if it's like the movie i'm gonna have a hell of a blast with this one because the movie the more i think about it i really like the movie on first watch on first viewing but the more i think about it over the last couple of days um i actually enjoy it much much more i'm thinking about some of the shot selections um i'm thinking about marge more and more and how iconic of a character she is she is absolutely fantastic and yeah the support on that reaction the support on the movie reaction was absolutely sensational so it's obviously warranted that you guys deserve the series to be started on the channel um so yeah let's get into the reaction this episode is titled the crocodile's dilemma it's a 70 minute um pilot episode or like introductory episode let's get into it let's absolutely smash it let's run it let's go bullshit it's a true story i'm not falling for this again <laughs> based on the comment sections <laughs> cap <laughs> The best thing about starting a brand new series is not seeing absolutely any footage of it. I have seen nothing of this. The closest thing I've seen to this is the film. That's it. The Coen Brothers film. That's it. Then POV road shots from the headlights, baby. <laughs> Woo! Oh, you know what would be crazy? If this guy lands, or like, nah, I thought I was gonna say, he hit the spot where Carl buried the money. That will be crazy on the barbed wire fence. Run, man. Pine Barrens, Soprano style, run! See, I don't know if this is its own universe. It's set in the same universe. It's a prequel. Oh no, it's not a prequel. It's um, a continuation from the events of the film. And I love being, I love being in the dark on that. Fun. What's that, huh? <laughs> I said it's Gordo's birthday tonight. Yeah. I'm supposed to be at your brother's at four with Meatloaf. Yes, I married the wrong Nygaard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. We had a good laugh. <laughs> it's just slow now at the shop. Oh, hon. That's what you always say. Slow. Salesmen make their own wins. You gotta try harder, hun. Smile for Pete's sake. Maybe wear a nicer tie. You gave me this tie. <laughs> well, if you were a better salesman, I'd have bought you a nicer tie. Hey, start wearing that Saul Goodman attire, man. <laughs> Get a little bit flashy. <laughs> Keep thinking maybe it's the settings. Get them vibrant colors. Get them abstract patterns out. The house all the time. <laughs> says he took the poster apart over the weekend. Now it's good as new. Brown beat the band. Yeah, he contemplating going back to Smaug the dragon. He said, F this wife. I want to go back to the company of the 13th Wolves. <laughs> what if you're right and they're wrong? <laughs> because what happens? What happens if you have an accident in your job? I work at the library. <laughs> okay. What happens if you have a car crash? Hey, John Wick could rock up to that library. Look what happened in part or, three. Or, or say you're up a ladder, cleaning out the gutters, and you fall off that darn thing and break your neck. These things happen every day. <laughs> and people uh, uh, fall asleep smoking in bed. They burn to death. 
And what, what I'm saying is the morgue is, is, is full of guys thought they didn't need life insurance. For, 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 for peace of mind, I'm saying to know that your little boy. Or girl. Right, or a little girl is taken care of. We are supposed to be at my mom's by four. Yeah, so we're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, uh, at least let me give you a, a brochure. Or, or I got these uh, pen. I got these nif nifty pens. Look, look at that. Oh. With, with most of the colors. Okay. Well, if, if those you, pens are goaded, man. Give me. A... Yeah, you don't. You don't look black, Dad. Yeah, Dad. You don't look black. More like a big pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a big stupid pumpkin. <laughs> Lester, <laughs> nigger. Now come on, Sam. It's it's my guard, just, just like in high school. You went to high school with the black man, Dad? Yeah, Dad. Did you? Shut up. How you been, Lester? Oh yeah, real good. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Trucking companies doing super. Got rigs all over the Great Lakes. Just bought a summer house up Bear Island. It's pretty sweet. What was the name of that girl you went with in high school? You know, a uh, curvy one. It's Pearl. Yeah. Yeah. Pearl. <laughs> what a rack on that girl, huh? <laughs> Dad thinks she had big titties. Yeah, I know what rack means. You're fury. Ow. Yo, the brain yeah, cells on out. these three equals three. That's it. You know, she gave me a tug once. Homecoming, senior year. Had the nice, fat hands. Real soft. <laughs> We're married now, going on 18 years. <laughs> oh, Dad, that's embarrassing. Yeah, Dad, super embarrassing. <laughs> He'd write my name on my fist in Sharpie before I'd punch him, so everyone else would know who did it. That's a good one, Dad. Yeah, Dad, real good one. Remember? See, it's usually the insecure ones doing this shit. Yeah, I, it's, it's a long time ago. <laughs> he could make an insurance oh, claim. <laughs> oh. Can I have a sip? Oh. Yeah. Heck, take the whole thing. <laughs> Drink the darn thing without a straw. Fargo grape. Damn, that's interesting. I want to try that. Other two are just kids, but big for their age, you know. <laughs> if I was any kind of man, I'd have shown that Sam what's what. Showing what's what? Oh, his. He had his sons with him. And... You let a man beat you in front of his children to send them a message? No, that's not. <laughs> I don't know if the message would get through to those kids, man. <laughs> just. In my experience, if you let a man break your nose, the next time he tries to break your spine. Sent no way. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I don't think. Don't Maybe be that just, naive. I, Come I, on. I, guess I uh, embarrassed him in front of his boys. You embarrassed him? Yeah. By, uh, he, he was telling me about a time where he and my wife, they were. Uh, but he, he didn't know she was my wife, is the thing. And uh, when I told him. But, this man slept with your wife, and you're worried about embarrassing him. Uh -uh, not slept. No, they, they didn't. Uh, it was, he said it was just... She has soft hands. <laughs> <see. laughs> Mister, we're not friends. I mean, maybe we will be someday. <laughs> I got to say, if that were me in your position, I would have killed that man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you said he bullied you in high school, right? Four years. 
Yo. Give me an ulcer. He unleashing the beast. He unleashing the beast. Untie me in an oil barrel and roll me in the road. Serious? Yo, he he literally gave him the desolation of smell treatment with the barrel. And now he tells you <laughs> relations with your wife. He bullies you again in front of his children. This is a man who doesn't deserve to draw breath. Come on, man. Yeah, okay. But uh here's the thing. No, that is the thing. I mean okay. Okay. But what am I supposed to do? Heck, you're so sure about it. Maybe you should just kill him for me. Agreed. You're asking me to kill this man. No, that is, <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> Mr. Nygaard? Uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that's... One, one second. We, 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 we're just two fellas talking, right? We're just blowing out steam. Sir... It's real busy. Like I said, one second. Just, just one second. That is not. Sir. Just one word. Yes or no. Sir, I'm going to give you a spot. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm coming for Pete's sake. He said yeah. He said yeah. <laughs> Yo, to him, that's a binding contract. You don't suggest it. I like how they have sort of like, is it the chime? Like, it's sort of like a a wind chime, like, note throughout that scene right there. And um, that scene right there was the cinematography um, with sort of that beautiful wide, medium, long shot of them uh, conversing one another. And you let the scene play out. It was a long extended take of them uh, conversing one another. And it's when Billy Bob Thornton's character came closer is when they came to a tighter, closer shot um, with them two in frame. And what I like about that as well is similar to the film obviously the film was made in 91 i think um i like how even though this is a modern show it maintains sort of that film grain um to it um i just love that yeah i just love how the the shots all have this sort of grain to it i don't know i just i, I love the feel of that i just um yeah it just adds to the show in my opinion um you can notice it it's just yeah Oh man, give me them shots all day, all day, just like the film, baby. That's that North by Northwest cinematography. <laughs> Very reminiscent of that. I mentioned it in the film. Saw that. I was thinking maybe a deer, but I uh, couldn't find the evidence. So it's it's not the Marge introduction. <laughs> it's not as good yet. <laughs> it's hard to top that introduction, man. It's hard. Frances McDormand nailed it. I wonder why she won Best Supporting Actress. Here it is. I believe I missed that deer in the trunk. Don't take it hard. I've been this a long time. I've checked for a deer in the trunk. Or any wildlife. Chief. Damn, my guy got the shining treatment right there. It smells good. Your boy wanted a hamburger. Wait, oh my gosh, she was in Better Call Saul. <laughs> the Kettleman's. <laughs> Maybe this guy's the Marge of the show. <laughs> How's she doing? Molly? And his yeah, wife's but... pregnant, but she's the housewife. <laughs> yeah, she's a peach. Anyhow, looks like uh, the driver tried to head out on foot. I also like the subtle nods um, to the film in terms of like, the way, I think it's Lester, that's Martin Freeman's character, the way his house looks, um, the kitchen. I feel like it's a cool nod to the film um, with Jerry and how his kitchen looked. Um, I think you had sort of like the the piggy statues or the elephant statues as well, which is a nod to the first film. And I like as well how his household, one of the police officers' household, this guy is similar just to Marge's household, how there's like a stairway coming up from the entrance into the house, um, which is very similar to um, the film there. I don't know if that's a slight Easter egg to the film, um, last but I just feel like it is. Oh my. Well, I'm ready to get painting. And this woman's so Did indecisive. You, you probably don't think... You're a good man, Vern Thurman. My sister was crazy telling me not to marry you. <laughs> Your sister is crazy. Mm. 
Lisa in the side, see if she gonna see a boy come out of there, and she gonna think it's a girl. She gonna... You're doing it wrong. You need to press your forearm into the back of his neck, <laughs> grab your elbow with the other hand, choke him right out. <laughs> what, what you want, mister? Yeah, mister. What do you want? Sign outside says Hessen Sons. Who wants to know? Me? Only two reasons to come to my shop, friend. <laughs> Either you need a truck, or you drive a truck. Uh, I love how he looked around. He's like, driver? who else is here that wants to know? <laughs> talking to your boys. I think the younger one's a little dim. What did you say? His IQ seems low, I'm saying. Hey, I called that out before. <laughs> Hit him, Dad. Yeah, Dad. Hit him. <clears throat> I'm gonna restrain myself. You know, on account of you got an obvious head injury. Not beat you to death with a tire iron. But I'm gonna ask you again. What the heck do you want? I just wanted to have a look at you. There's the chime again. Okay. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it, donkey. <laughs> Yo, Billy Bob Thornton's character, cold, cold, man. He's a sadistic, twisted motherfucker, I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Governor. <laughs> we're here. Right. Come on in. Chaz is working the hand. Oh. Took the whole team down to Luth Tuesday. Is that how you work ahead? Right at the Marriott. Oh, I Boss took me out for dinner. Just the two of them. Steak big as a catcher's mitt. My Some guy chest. caressing that ham, too Don't sus. In this world. Too Give sus. Raise and a corner office. Yeah. You're that Lester. Corner office. You're gonna have to marry that ham. You get any more from Luth? Side <laughs> on Rachel Ray. She said that massaging breaks the muscle down, makes the meat juicier. Mm. <laughs> okay, that is a sexual reference. Now, hold on. That That's is. <laughs> we make Gordo try stuff all the time. Chaz says we have to open his horizons. Broaden his horizons. Why is this? World, you know, why is this kid iconic already? Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> He's drinking out of a straw huh? now. <laughs> There's a, a, a spot over by the fire station. It's always icy. Sweet. Yeah, not those. Damn, was that an M60? Oh, gee. What, what is that? That there is your M249 oh, my bad, my bad. machine gun. My bad. I got the M right. Sometimes referred to as the piglet. The piglet. <laughs> Are you? Oh, well, can you even have that? Is it legal? Technically, no way. But I got a buddy work supply over Camp Ripley. And heck, I'm an American. I pay my taxes. <laughs> you want to take a look? My guy thinks it's the... operated air-cooled shoots 725 rounds. Per minute. Damn, I thought my Nerf gun did that when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez. You should have told me it was so heavy. It, is it okay? No, Lester. It's not okay. You Here. You broke the darn... Why are you such a greedy screw up? Yo. Ever since you were... And now, Kitty, she said she talked to Pearl last week. And she's had it. Your wife. Said you've been acting plain weird. Just well, looking around. Said you're caught you standing in the bathroom with your toothbrush in your hand, just looking in the mirror. Said foam was coming out of your mouth like a rabid dog. Oh, come on. That's not how I may or may not be feeling. And for your information, I hadn't had a lot of sleep the night before. So, so, so the, the toothpaste, that was just nothing. Did you really trip on the ice and break your nose? Yeah. Yes. I, I told you, outside the fire station. You know they run the hoses and wash the trucks and guess nah, what? Nah, he, he got whacked by the force. Someone force oh, pushed him into the, the guys that work, glass. They talk about how they look up to their brothers. Their older brothers. Sometimes I tell people, you're dead. Whoa. I mean, heck, Lester, you're 40 years old. What up? When are you going to get your act together? Your own brother? Brother? You didn't have to hit him. 
I mean, seriously, what is the matter with you? <laughs> Yo, let's start a ticking time bomb this oh, episode, brother. man. He had an interaction with one man. One man. <laughs> and he's thinking death already. St. Paul, the call was expected yesterday. <laughs> I got delayed. Problems? Car trouble is fixed now. But you finished the assignment. Of course. Yo, come on, man. St. Paul was a good guy. Oh, man. <laughs> In a polar opposite of St. Paul. <laughs> He's definitely the pre-St. Paul, the sore individual, but not St. Paul. Did he throw a knife him? <laughs> Damn! Yeah. Headshot, yeah. throw a knife. Headshot, dead. Leon Edwards. Oh, jeez, where? Listen. This guy, mm -hmm. this guy getting them Marge late night yeah, calls but... as well. <laughs> or early morning calls. <laughs> Bro, I know that guy was a bully, but there was no justification whatsoever yeah. to kill that man right there. What you want me to write for? That copy? says a lot about his character. But self-explanatory. You okay there, Bill? Oh yeah. Threw up a bit ago. Let's I'm here. I hope. Freaking go! Went out to the parking lot. Let's go! Spaghetti for dinner. I had no idea Bob Odenkirk was in this. No way! I'm okay now. So long as I don't look. <laughs> oh, this is about to be cinema, man. <laughs> oh, heck. Well, geez, you, you think this could be like an organized crime thing? <laughs> no, a hit or the like. I don't know what I think yet. That was warm in bed half an hour ago. <laughs> I need a room. Just you. Pardon? Is it just for you, a room? What difference does that make? <laughs> it's a different rate for you. And if you got cats, dog, cat, it's an extra ten bucks. What if I got a fish? Excuse me? Would a fish cost me ten dollars? Or what if I kept spiders or mice? What if I had bacteria? Sir, bacteria are not pets. Could be. Sir, perhaps you'd be happier in a different... <laughs> he asking all the real questions. This guy should critique films. <laughs> I just want to know the policy. You see, I'm a student of institutions. Uh, sir, do you have a pet or not? No. It's just me. This guy's creepy, man. This guy's creepy. Nah, uh, he's such an interesting character. And I already can tell off the bat, um, he's meant to be, I feel like, the grim thread of this show. But I feel like he has way more layers to him. I feel like he's even more evil than Grimstead, in my opinion. Like, this guy is just the epitome of evil. He's the reincarnation of evil. And I just feel like with this show, with the depiction of how the town of Fargo, I think it's the town of Fargo, has been portrayed so far. It seems like there's this aura of like mystery and I'm not going to say supernatural, but I just feel like there's an unnervy sort of atmosphere surrounding this town at the moment. I feel like the people themselves behave a little bit weird. I don't know if this is just me, um, but in my opinion, there's something quite in the air that I don't know if it's just like if it's a line being delivered, then you have like sort of like the wind chime sound. And I don't know, there's just this like aura of just, yeah, it's just, it's just a weird atmosphere so far in the beginning of this um episode. And yeah, I just find Billy Bill Thornton's character to be really, really interesting. And um at the end of the movie, you saw Marge deliver those sweet, sweet lines to Grimsford in the back of the um, police car about, you know, it being a beautiful day. Um, I believe she said, you know, there's more to this world than just a little bit of money. Um, I'm sort of paraphrasing at the moment. Um, and I feel like that maybe 
got to Grimsford. It could have maybe got to him, and it seemed like by facial by his facial expressions, it got to him. Um, and there was a little bit of humanity in there left in him, or he just. Or it just went straight through his head, um, and one in one ear and out the other. Um, but I just feel like with Billy Bob Thornton's character here, I just feel like there's I can see in his eyes there's no there's no humanity in that guy whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's just really really interesting. Like he cold, no pun intended. He cold. He's the walking devil. Ah, oh, she's not that bad. And she compared you to a clam. He's the instigator, man. What should I do? The guy insulted me once. I pissed in his gas tank. The car never drove straight again. See? The wind chime again. The wind chime again. It's almost as if the wind chime is a cue for him instigating and turning someone to the dark side. I kid you not. I kid you not. <laughs> He's the walking devil and he's tempting everyone to turn to the dark. And I feel like they've mentioned how people in this town already, like, I feel like Lester's brother has autism. Sam's kids are oh, not yes, all there. Yeah. I'm looking out my uh, window and uh, there's a young fellow urinating in the gas tank of a red cavalier. Hook, line, and sinker. See? He's just queuing violence. He's queuing violence. And I guess these people, they're not mentally strong up, Thanks, Dad. to resist those temptations Look and urges. I feel like he's got some supernatural powers. Yeah. Told you, man. He's doing Jedi mind tricks. Himself killed last night over the lucky penny. You don't say. Knife in the head. You didn't hear that from me. He looks familiar too, this guy. Throws my ass to the ground just like the other. <laughs> Thinking of doing some ice fishing this weekend. Sorry, oh, interested? That's another Easter egg. Marge's husband was going ice fishing, was wasn't he? In the film, she got him the worms, the bait. I've been thinking, pop that fella in the snow with the underpants. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I'm getting excited over the Easter eggs. I just like those callbacks. I feel like fans of the yeah. film would love this. See, we know from the wreck that whoever was driving cracked their head on the steering wheel, right? The fella in the snow. No head injury. Yeah. So I love those little subtle details in the there. script. Deputy. Oh, thanks. If he's not the driver, I guess we gotta ask, who is he? Ran his prints? Nothing. Plus, turns out the car was stolen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, over in Grand Forks. Yeah. I called the local PD. I'm just waiting on a call back. God, it's dead. Ma, don't talk like that. Yeah, Ma, don't talk like that. Makes me live in the North Pole, and then he's got the nerve to... I'm not kidding. Brother, that's Sam's I'm wife? Sam's funeral. And he was cheating on her? Mm-hmm. La 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 la. <laughs> Mr. Mickey, you have a phone call. She said me, you doofus. Yeah, can I come? Some people are not oh. all there in this show. <laughs> Stay here with Ma. I'd like to say how sorry I am for your loss. Okay. Uh, next thing is. He impersonating other I'm individuals. I'm responsible for overseeing the dispersal of your dad's vast estate. You mean the money? Right. Uh, money, real estate, uh, holdings, automobiles, and, uh, well, there's no delicate way to put this. Uh, the will was very clear. Your dad decided to give everything to your younger brother, Mo. Oh, my God. See, the chime again. The chime again. But the will was very specific. Quote, I leave the entirety of my vast estate to my second born and favorite son, Mo. Oh my God. So, come on. Man. Like he knows I these really people are mentally weak, man. Anyway, he he praying it. on the weak. Uh, once again, I'm sorry for your loss. Who is the Jesus of this show? Yeah, if this guy's question, the devil. Please, uh, don't Where's Jesus, man? Well, I said, Mrs. Hess, we're checking some things on our end, but if there's anything you can tell oh, us... Oh, bro, Mo about, about to get whacked. Uh, appreciate the visit. Like I said, it's a puzzler. Of course, we both know some of your boys have had run-ins with the law. Bro, if he kills his younger brother, I'm going to flip. And the like. I'm going to you know, flip. The Stadies had that case as to maybe your outfit's got ties to that crime syndicate out of Fargo. Whoa, whoa. you're going to stand here 
Let me get this straight. You're going to stand here and call the victim a criminal? Great framing. Great framing. Oh! No, no, no one's calling anyone a criminal. Just trying to figure out what happened. Chief! 217! 217! <laughs> oh, damn! She did the Bobby Lashley spear on his ass. That was a good spear. Fair play. And the mum just laughs it off. Oh, my. I swear. Yeah, there's four people in that family. The husband, the wife, and the two kids. There's three brown cells between all four of them. I'm telling you. I don't even know if they... I don't even want to give them one brain cell between the four of them. Like, they should share one brain cell. Like... <laughs> Say, Lester, I need you to pull the file on uh, Sam Hess. This guy looked um, like Steve Buscemi, man. Sam Hess. He owns a truck people over on Winslow. That, that's Carl, bro. Up. Come on. Oh, well, he's dead. Sure. Uh, you, you, you know what? See, with him? the wind chimes you know are being saying? abused, man. Anyway, I need you to pull the policy on that. I get on the phone with his wife. It's a cue for confusion. Paranoia. Being perplexed. Instigating something. I played Ghost of Tsushima, man. I used them wind chimes to distract people, to confuse them, and then go in for the kill. <laughs> I had nothing to do with Sam Hess's death. Wallah. Wallahi. Remember yes or no? I never said yes. Didn't say no. No. That will Come on. That will in, in a court of law? Who said anything about it? I just mean. Oof. I just mean, jeez. I feel like this individual as well. When he had a wife, you know. Is well voice. versed in all areas That's of life. He's in a barrel that rolls you on the road. Like he's intelligent <sighs> to prey on these your individuals. Is you spent your whole life thinking there are rules. There aren't. Not only with like their mind. to be gorillas. And psychic. All we had is what we could take and defend. Like even in the court of law. The truth is you're more of a man today. Yesterday. How do you figure? Caveman vibes. It's a red tide, Lester. This life of ours. The shit they make us eat. Day after day, the boss, the wife, etc., wearing us down. If you don't stand up to it, let them know you're still an ape. Deep down where it counts, you're just gonna get washed away. Primitive. Primitive outlook. Phone call, chief. It's the wife. I love this man. I love this man. <laughs> no diddy, hey, but I love this man. Wait, what? I decided we're going to paint the nursery white. It's already white. Well, I want to paint it again. I mean, the baby's room should have a new coat, don't you think? I do. Any particular shade? What do you mean? Well, you got your bright white, your snow white. Hey, shell. I like cream. Right, there's eggshell. Oh, Ice white. I hadn't thought of that. Tell you what, why don't I stop by the hardware and pick up some different shades and we'll figure it out tonight. Even the ice cream fell. Burn. That's true. No, I mean it's finally sinking in. We're gonna have a baby. I can't wait. Brother, it looks like you're 10 months in. I'll see you soon. Of course you're having a baby. <laughs> the baby long overdue. <laughs> Is there anything else you need there? No, I'm good. <laughs> is the washing machine being that turbulent meant to reflect Lester's mind state? Like the whirlwind of emotions he's going through at the moment. Everything's unstable. Nothing's calm. It's just one big storm. You killed it. <laughs> killed my washing machine. No, I was... It was the... <laughs> the tide. I love how that I, I, I <laughs> the sort of tide standing up to the, the red was, tide. I love how that sort of parallels the conversation with Billy Bob Thornton's character, Saint Paul, um, about you know killing an individual or killing something, and indirectly or directly doing it. Like I was being a man, <sighs> but you're not a man, Lester. You're not even half a man. Whoa! Honestly, I don't know what got into me marrying you. Whoa! My mom what? said. Don't do it, Pearl. She said, he's the kind of boy that loses all the time. And you know what those boys grow up to be, don't you? 
losers. Take that back. For what? Yo. What are you gonna do? I told you, you every. You can't even face me when we're having sex. Now hold on. Whoa. Is you not facing me. That's so I can picture a real man. Oh! Hmm. Not the hammer. Not the hammer. Come on. Come on. You take that back. For what? What are you gonna do? Bro, everyone is an instigator oh. in this show. You gonna hit me? That's a laugh. Yo, he gave her the backhand with the hammer. I told you, the devil is in this show. The devil is in this show. The body count this episode is crazy. Yo, this ain't the movie where he sort of like orchestrated the kidnapping and his wife was killed by Grimsford. He directly killed his wife this time. Let's see how he can, is he is he is he as bad as Jerry in rehearsing? Uh, yeah, it, 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 it's me. You gotta help me out. I done something bad. Leroy Motor in. Oh, hi. Uh, can, can I room twenty three, please? Look, I think I uh. She's in the basement, Dad. And uh, look, I'm freaking out here. I don't know what to do. Lester, have you been a bad boy? <laughs> please. Yeah. Hammer and uh, look, can you come over? I'm on, I'm on Willow Creek Drive, number 613. Please, sure, Lester, I'll be right there. Thank you, thank you. He's enjoying every moment of this, the chaos he's caused, how he's twisted the minds of individuals. But these individuals, like these guys, are they're all mentally effed up if they're doing this type of shit anyway. If they're easily that sort of um, convinced. St. Paul has a way with words. Look at the scriptures he wrote. And look at how he's talking this episode. You killed her. Yeah, you're just as bad as Jerry, man, in rehearsing and acting. <laughs> you ain't convincing. You killed her. Yo, this episode been crazy. Crazy. If y'all think Lester was justified in killing his wife right there, killing Pearl, y'all just as bad as these people in the show. Come on, man. It just, clearly, there's been tension in the marriage for a while. You just divorce her. Even Lester. Oh yeah, I forgot he was gonna pay a visit. I forgot he was gonna pay a visit. Well, the reason I'm here, I'm not sure you heard. Sam Hess got killed last night with a lucky penny. Oh, nasty business. Yeah. And well, I heard you were talking to another fella about Hess before he died, over at the hospital. It's a small town. No, I everybody think so. knows what where everybody lives. <laughs> the other fella. Lester, listen to me very carefully. I need you to get down on the ground. Second, Lester. Don't tell ground. me. Don't tell me no, Paul's gonna come in down. out of don't, nowhere don't, and. Don't, don't go down there. There's nothing down. That's Handle not, the I situation. Didn't I, didn't, I just got home. I just got home. This I guy seems like good down. police, man. Not, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. I, I, I didn't do nothing. I, I just came home. I just came home. No, Chief Thurman, no. I'm at 613 Willow Creek Drive. Request him back up. 613 Willow Creek Drive. Just been. One of the craziest introductions of television in terms of like the lack of humanity in this. There is no humanity, non existent. Lester, are there any more cops? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
My man's got a kid on the way. You got any more shells for this thing? <laughs> Is that the basement? Mm. I hate everyone in this show so far. Besides Bob Odenkirk and his partner police officer. Oh, uh, is that one of the pellets from the shotgun? Like, uh... Um... Like a little bit of shrapnel? We didn't see his wife there. Guessing the body's still there. Told you, man. Four got supernatural powers. Man, the key to hap the the key to life. Wait, I'm trying to read what it says on the board. The fish that stands out, and it's going in the other direction. What do you think is he was gonna go to Narnia right there? Like this ain't platform nine and three quarters. The key to life, the key to life is happiness. Oh, okay, that's what it's okay. But clearly, there ain't no happiness in this episode. He done knocked himself out. The odd one out. Perfect alibi to be knocked out like that. And where the heck did Paul go, man? Is he hiding in the shadows again? Man, that, that cop's wife, like his poor wife, was already lost in my opinion. Like, she wasn't really all there. She was a bit confused. And I do not want to see the state of her after she finds out that her husband's been killed. Like, and the baby could possibly not make it as well if she just goes into shock. He got the white paint for her. No, he was on his way home. Fuck! One of the only good people this episode. Lester, you're on the dark side, baby. You're there now. You're a Sith. I don't care. This is the most heartfelt scene this episode. The only one of genuine human emotion. Oh, that, that. Listen, nothing needed to be said there. You just had... That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, Dad here. Come back. <laughs> Vikings up by 13. Over. What happened? Over. Homework. Over. <laughs> uh, I did my math and science. I still have to do English. Over. Okay, well, as soon as the game's over. Over. <laughs> Can he be bothered? Yes, he can. Is this the area in the film where the... Oh, okay. I thought in the film, though, uh, this is the scene where the guy was shoveling ice and they had that long extended conversation. I could be wrong. I think I'm, I think I'm very wrong. I don't want another cop to pull a car over and die, man. I've seen it one time too many already. Please. And I ain't talking about this episode. He was just talking to his daughter. Leave it at that. Over. The 
Depends who's in the driver's seat. That's that's who I care about. Evening, officer. Evening. License and registration, please. You could do that. Or you could go get in your car and drive away. Yes. The ladder, the ladder. Why would I do that? Because some roads you shouldn't go down. The way that was delivered. Because maps used to say there'd be dragons here. Now they don't. Bad choice road. Bad choice road. But that don't mean the dragons aren't there. Yeah. The myth and legends, baby. You step out of the car, please, sir. No, no, no. Go to the door, man. How old's your kid? You said step out of the car. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Come on, can we just part ways? Officer Grimley, I'm going to roll my window up, and then I'm going to drive away. And you're going to go home to your daughter. And every few years, you're going to look at her face and know that you're alive because you chose not to go down a certain road on a certain night. But you chose to walk into the light instead of into the darkness. The thing is, he's not walking into the darkness. He's just, like, doing his work. He pulled a guy over for speeding, justifiably so. Sir. He's doing his job. I'm rolling up my window. Yeah, he got that. I told you, man. I told you, man. He put that unforgivable curse on him, Harry Potter style. What's the one where you control people? Is it the Cruciatus? No, that's the, that's the torture one. Imperious curse. Imperium, man. Imperio, sorry. Dad, come in, Dad. Over. Great tension in that scene right there. Dad? The man gets to go home to his daughter. Woo! This guy has a knack for doing some self-harm. Shouldn't he be cuffed to the table, like to the bedside? Do this for the fish. Unless you think they think that's cannibalism. Yo, that episode was... Listen, a lot of atrocities happened in the film. Don't get me wrong. But because of Marge, she provided that like warmth and sort of like that ability to sit back and just have that breath of fresh air during the film because she provided that lighthearted sort of um, ease, like she eased the tension a lot of the time um, during the film. But in this episode, Billy Bob Thornton's character, man, like it's almost as if whatever happiness... There is no happiness in this episode. I'm just going to say it right there. Yeah, I chuckled a few times, but like, we we need a, we desperate, like what this episode, I guess, showcases, obviously I've said it in the reaction, the, the utterly, the utter worst of humanity, pure evil. That's what this episode is. Um, and what it makes me feel it is it makes me miss Marge, if that makes sense. Like we need her presence, I feel like. I feel like she's a presence that's sorely, 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 sorely missed. You need the light to balance the darkness. And there is no balance at the moment. It's completely imbalanced, okay? The Sith have taken over. We need the Jedi to reign again, man. The Jedi have lost control. <laughs> and there's like, yeah, like whatever happiness there was is sucked right out. So it's going to be interesting to see how the show unfolds after this. Um, and what new characters are going to be introduced um, because I think Martin Freeman's Lester, he's meant to be the main character along with Billy Bob Thornton. Um, seems like they're going to be a duo that sort of cannot escape one another after this ordeal. Um, but Lester, listen, no matter what you do throughout the series, I feel like you're irredeemable, brother. You're re irredeemable at this point. Um, and it's one of those situations where he indirectly killed the cop as well. It's like an accessory by calling, um... 
obviously he didn't know he was going to rock up, but by calling Paul, you just know Paul was not going to let that slide. Like, you just know the type of man he is. Oh, man. Oh, th that was actually a fantastic episode. I cannot wait to get into this show. I hope this reaction does well. I'm praying it does well, and I'm praying you guys enjoy it. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, it's been your boy, Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.